My friend, my friend, this is how you find your head voice falsetto and you learn your instrument inside and out. I just happen to have chosen the guitar. Uh, you could choose any instrument that you want of your choice, but we are focusing on hearing the instrument and hearing our voice. So I'm gonna just choose an arbitrary key. How about A major? A major is A, B, C sharp, D, E, F sharp, G sharp, and A. No matter where you play these tones, they are always going to be in the key of A major because A major has three sharps. Knowing that is not crucial to playing any instrument, but it really does help when you're trying to do a little bit of vocal training as well. Like one, three, five, one, three, five, one is a great way to get accustomed with your arpeggios. And no matter where they are and holding in on your voice and your vocal structure. Now, what we're talking about today is how to hold a note. Uh, holding the root note, moving up a note, and then holding that note out while I do a mode over the top. That's one of the first videos that we we're doing. Today we're simply talking about how far you can push all these notes with your scale patterns in any instrument. So if it's like your clarinet, blow the note, take it off, sing the note. If it's saxophone, do the same thing or hum while you're doing it. Mandolin, yeah, the notes are higher. Try and find an octave downer. But the idea is we're gonna be working on moving between our singing voice, which is la, really strong, you know, and then into our, our falsetto or a head voice, which generally isn't that strong. So if we were to play A, la, 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 those notes are kind of like my breaking point. That feels a little tinny. I'm gonna go up here. A, B, C sharp, D, E, F sharp, G sharp, A. I assume my breaking point is about here because I don't really have a high range in the key of A. So we have this. Let me see what I can do. Uh, this is definitely my breaking range. So what you would do is take a scale that you know, do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do, and see how high you can go, starting here. As soon as you feel the air in the back of your throat shift from being a full constant tone through the, I guess, for lack of better words, your esophagus, this is like a fuselage, it goes from one point to the other. When it comes out the top and dynamically you hear the shift, what we focus on is making those two notes, the note where you can hit it, being able to go up and hear that note no matter what you're able to sing, even if the note was horrible like that was, push yourself. Not too bad, make sure you drink water and you try this a couple times. What I can guarantee is if your top cutout point is like do 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 re mi fa so la ti do re mi fa so la ti do by the time you get up to higher note octave ranges, you will have increased your head voice and your falsetto voice by at least a note, if not two or three notes. I know this because from singing from the age of 15, even in my adulthood, because I sing every single day, I have been able to move my range up and down. Now, granted, do not smoke cigarettes, don't drink alcohol, don't do anything that's gonna affect your vocal or your larynx if you wanna become professional, and or just have a fun and um, melodic, soothing voice. The idea is the more you work on these notes, the easier it becomes to hear it. So if you do something like, do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do, or do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do, you will be able to hear the difference between a major third and a minor third within your one one, three, five, one, three, five. It is astounding when you start writing music to hear the difference between the two and be able to relate that to a key signature. I digress. For vocal wise, what we're really concentrating here on today is that you're standing up straight, you're playing your instrument of choice, and then you rely on yourself to play the notes you just heard. Meaning, if you can say, do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, oh, you don't even have to be in the same key to practice this. If I sang a G, uh, but played an A, uh, 
if you try to not move to it, you can hear Do, Re, Mi, Fa, So, La, Ti, Do. Do, Re, Mi, Fa, So, La, Ti, Do. It's very weird to hear that because it would work it up in fifths or fourths or seconds. If I were to sing a D, Do, Re, Mi, Fa, So, La, Ti, Do. But play the A, Do, Re, Mi, Fa, So, La, Ti, Do. Do you hear the harmonies that have just been created by singing two patterns in perfect force? Anywho, music theory, blah, blah, blah. These are all things that you could put together to have fun while doing music voice training on your own. You don't need a full band. In fact, it is a lot of fun when you do this with a band situation, but it's not needed to be that way. You could try this on yourself in a duo, trio, or in a choral ensemble fashion. So, ensemble, ensemble fashion, ensemble. Uh, so, the last thing I'll leave you on try every single note in the circle fist. If you have your instrument on the guitar, it just happens to be. The patterns re repeat themselves. In fact, on any stringed or fretboarded instrument, you will have patterns that repeat themselves. So I'm gonna try and play some large scale patterns here, see if you pick on them, and then try this uh, on your own. Do, do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do. 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 And on the lower extreme, maybe if you could go, do, re, mi, fa, so, la, and get up those higher notes, then you could have that uh, um, higher tenor. If this is for a female voice, it's the same thing. You would just move it up the register from the alto to the uh, soprano to the mezzo soprano. I really hope this helps somebody on their quest to work on their false load or head voice. If you have any questions, put it in the comment section, and I will be back to you. Aloha.